and welcome to Cracking the Cryptic. Now, a slightly odd excursion today, I'm going to be solving a crossword that I set. Now that sounds ridiculous, obviously, if I set it, I know the answer, but not in this case. I set it 13 or 14 years ago, and therefore, although I kind of know how the finish works, and I, I'm kind of going to show that to you, then um, I haven't solved the clue, you know, I haven't seen these clues for 13 or 14 years, and although I mock Simon for not knowing the answer to clues he set a couple of days ago, um, in my case, I think it would be very odd if I was to remember the answer immediately to any clue I had set that long ago. So, we shall see. Um, Sudoku solvers, don't be too downhearted. If you've watched this far, you might want to tune back in um, a certain amount of time later to see the end of this puzzle, because even you might be interested. Um, as I should put up how many minutes later that is. But here we go then. So, slightly odd grid here with um, some of the uh, blocked cells in black and some in grey, but otherwise a fairly normal kind of broadsheet crossword grid. Um, and here's the preamble where we always start to line parts by Mr. Magoo. That's me. Each clue contains a misprint. Corrected letters give an instruction necessary to complete the grid. In most cases where answers clash, ah, oh, there are going to be clashes between words, solvers must choose one of the two clashing letters for the relevant cell, but in some cases the letter to be entered comes from neither of the clashes. This information will be essential to allow the grid to be completed uniquely. So I don't really know what that means anymore. I mean, there's going to be clashes and how I resolve them, I hope the message from the misprints and the clues will tell me, because otherwise I'm not sure. This information will be essential to allow the grid to be completed uniquely. Solver solutions need only show the lights. That's kind of a word for entries that form or replace the clue answers. Um, yeah, as I say, this appeared in the Magpie about 14 years ago. Magpie is still going. We just entered our 17th year and had a party the other night to celebrate with all our, with lots of solvers turning up. So that's good fun. Um, I don't know how many of them will have been subscribers for 13 years ago and solved this. So anyway, straight on with the clues. One across, crackheads at intervals wormed into mass. Well, at intervals... Um, the alternate letters of crackheads are C-A-K-E-D, caked, which is a good word. And to work something into a mass is to cake it. So I think we get a K from the misprint there. And one across is caked. So there may obviously be clashes, but let's assume one down starts with a C. One down, find in informal US speech. What's outstanding in ancient language? Well, I don't know what's going on there. Can't is informal speech, but I didn't think it was US. Don't know. Two down. King Ivor is incorrect. Prince Ivor premiered here. Well, incorrect is suggesting an anagram. We've got the K for king. So an anagram of Ivor after that gives us Kirov, which is probably where a ballet called Prince Ivor premiered, and although I must have looked that up at the time, I wouldn't have remembered that now. Three down, in despair, ape they changed. That looks like it must be an anagram of ape they, but I might have a D to start it, and in despair. And it's terrible wording, I mean, I don't know what that Barely a decent surface. Don't know what that clue's doing. 11 across. Cold hell, not posh, gross. Ooh, coal. Oh, Avernus. Yes, okay. Avernus is one of the classical versions of hell. Cold is the letter C, and if you take Avernus without the U, as in U and non U, for posh, you get caverns. Now that's not gross, but there's a misprint, and they I think there's a word for a, a cave which is a grot. So we get a T misprint out of that, and the entry caverns. Um, might as well try nine across. Equant. 
than his initial impulse to encircle life around. Ah, well, if you were trying to get a cue into a clue, equant, eluent is a word for something that washes things. Ptolemy's initial must be P. Impulse, urge. Yes, purgative, my God. Purgative. So Ptolemy's initial is a P, and then you put urge around vita backwards, which is life from the Latin. Oops, sorry, I misprinted there. Yeah, purgative, which is an eluent, I would think, in that it washes something clean. So that's a very odd Q misprint. Um... It does say corrected letters, so L is the corrected letter. I was just wondering why. You know, I must have done it myself, but I can't understand how you would, how I would have chosen that very strange misprint with a Q replacing it. Probably never seen, although obviously I don't remember, another Q as the misprint. Sometimes you've seen Q in the message and it's the correct letter, but not often the misprint. One down. Find in inform. Okay, what's outstanding in the ancient language? Oh, f copacetic is a U former, probably now, US slang term for that's great, so fine in informal US speech. And that puts ace in Coptic. Wow. That's quite a good spot. Uh, so E for fine. Um, 13 across. Follow inhabitant from big city following yank. Uh, possibly the fact that it says yank is making me think New York. Towny. A... Yeah, to yank is to tow, possibly. And the big city is NY. So, is that a fellow inhabitant, a townie, somebody who shares your town with you? Probably. Might be the wrong misprint there, but I'm going to go with that. We could, however, be forming the in the message there, and that's quite likely. Let's have another look at three down. In despair, ape they changed. I mean, changed is such an anagram indicator. It's very hard to work out how it might not be used, but in despair. True. I don't know. I don't know what's going on there. I have to so I mean, there is one, interestingly, although misprints obviously complicate clues, um, they will give me a little extra help in the end. Once I've found the message from the clues, I will know what the misprint is in this um, clue, pre presumably, and that might help solve it. So let's keep moving down here. 14 down begins with a W. Welsh having mischievous manner, not like here at all. Right. Mischievous. Imps are mischievous. So impish or impishly would be having a mischievous manner. And that would be not like a hero at all rather than not like here at all. So we get an O misprint. Um, I shouldn't praise my own clues. That's a bit gross boasting, but I quite like that. 17 across. Bloats one within the final services of the day. Complines, that's one of the services in a, in a kind of monk's day or something. Bloats. Oh, but the misprint's meant to have... Um, compline. Complains, bleats. One within complines. That must be a variant spelling of complines. Bleats is complains. Crikey. 
a um, bit silly, actually, to have done the left side of the grid because that's giving me a fractured message. I should really have concentrated on the top. Maybe let's let's try and remedy that. Have a look at four down. One getting loft for sport. One having too much loft. I suspect the uh, punctuation's gone wrong here. Let's just put in a semicolon or something there. Um, one getting loft for sport. Oh, a skier gets a lift for his sport. And a skier is a shot having too much loft. So here we've got an RS misprint uh, clash. I mean, don't know how that's going to be resolved yet. So I think I'm not that shocked to see that the clashes are occurring in the middle of the grid and not round the outside. We've got an eye for ski lift. Let's see if we can do four across. It'd be very helpful to have all these first letters. Oh, dotty alcoholic. Well, there's a misprint there. Um, it must be a double definition. Alcoholic can't have a misprint, I wouldn't have thought. So dotty must become potty or something. But I don't like that because there must be quite a lot of synonyms for drunk, if that's what the alcoholic means. Well, maybe not. Alcoholic doesn't really mean drunk. There would be a lot of synonyms for drunk that meant the same as mad, I would have thought. Like, um, I can't think of any immediately cracked or something or... I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's not right. Anyway, I don't know the answer. Composer, compilers approaching home. This is five down. De dearly serious. Right. Well, that's quite easy, I think. The two seven and the E up there is making me think in earnest for serious, which could be deadly serious. And compilers approaching home translates as I near, or oh, compilers approaching I near, and then home is a nest. So we've got a D and it's in earnest. We've got another clash. It's obviously, we haven't actually had any cells in the center that aren't clashes yet, which is a worry. Um, don't know how they're going to be resolved. So 12 across, I could have a look at it, but it probably doesn't begin with R. Sue's related to a noted apostle. Kind of want that to be the. So that could be she's related to a noted apostle Pauline. Pauline? Pauline? I think it could be. I'm going to risk it. It's not absolutely certain, but it could well be Pauline. So we'll put P and R in that cell. Pauline in there. Now that might help with eight down where we don't think there's probably a clash. Articles of two countries for shaping wool. Well, a lathe shapes wood and is made up of a French the and English the, which are articles of two countries. So that's a D misprint. Seven down. United with their colour in Italy, a league of plants which rest. Right. Well, that is U for United. Red is their colour, because it might refer to Manchester United. In Italy is in I, A, and then L for League. So, Euridineal, which is... There, there is a plant, I thought, maybe a nettle called Eurido. So, Euridineal would be relating to that. Of plants which rest... I should probably look up the chamber's um, definition because it's quite likely that it'll be made clear what the misprint is by the chamber's definition there. So let's have a look at that. Um, ah, and four across, this dotty alcoholic. Looks like spiritual would fit. And I suppose that could mean relating to spirits. With, that's what the question mark means, sort of, in a way. Let's just have a look at Eurydineal first, which is um, related to Eurydinii, the rust fungi. 
So it's plants which rust, therefore, instead of rest, and we get a U for the message. Now, I'm, I'm thinking this is spiritual. Ah, and that's not potty, that's a ditty. Here's a song, as is a spiritual, perhaps. So it's two slightly loose definitions, but I'm sure that will be right, given those letters. Ten across, do this. I mean, it looks like the message begins, kilba. Do this caught in terminably inoperable air. Terminably. So terminally will be the misprint. Inoperable aeroplane. So I don't know. That's meant to be in the definition, isn't it? Do this caught in I don't know. Six across begins, six down begins with an I. What keeps one renting absurd rent, that must be an anagram, in 2A? Well, there isn't a two across. Oh, well, 2A, I suppose, just translates as II, the, the, Roman, the Roman numerals for two and A. Anagram of rent in that, we get inertia. What keeps one resting this time? So that's inertia. And this is T or U. All of these letters in, in the central grey part seem to be um, clashes. Ten across. Do this, eject. If you're. Ah, oh, okay. Wow, okay, it's an and lit clue. So the um, the whole clue operates both as the definition and the word play. And you would eject if you were caught in a terminally inoperable aeroplane, if you could. I understand that. So put C in terminally inoperable, i.e. the last letter of the word inoperable, that's E, and aeroplane is jet. Put a C in there, you get eject. So the whole clue functions there, and we do get an L for the message. It's quite neat. Quite like that. Right, um, 15 across. Make lard, that's screaming make hard, substance from burned iodine in azure compound. Sounds like it's going to need dictionary words that I don't really know. Iodine can be the letter I. Burnt iodine. Oh, but I mean, remember, these E and A are probably completely irrelevant. Let's try and go around the outside of the grid again. 25. Cries ethnic cleansing, as in years without restraint. to ethnic cleansing is either. Let's try 23. Dash right through sporting line. Oki. An oki in a, in a dance match is the line you throw from. And if you put right through that, you get ochre, which is a word. I don't quite know how that means dash. Let's look up ochre. One letter change from dash. Oh, money, especially gold. Didn't know that. So that's dosh, I suppose. Um, I say I didn't know that. Obviously, I did know it once, but I didn't know it now. 20 down. Catch a Libran smoking this. I don't know what that's about. A Lib uh, but of course, there's going to be an anagram. A Libyan. That would work. I mean, a, a misprint. So a Libyan. Hooker, hooker, that's what an Arab would smoke. Hook A, the misprint, the, the word play is catch A, becoming hook A. A misprint is a Y for a Libyan, quite glad I thought of that. 20 across with H something I, move dangerous broadcast into recent French history. So more dangerous would be hairier, and that puts air into air, the French for yesterday, which I suppose 
is recent French history. More dangerous gives us an R. Um, let's try this 25 across. Cries ethnic cleansing, as in years without restraint. So cries will have the misprint, probably. Tries. Oh, tries ethnic cleansing. Ooh. As in years. I don't know. I don't know. 18 down. The only letter we can be confident about is that E. Avian term for creature like egg bird. What? Avian term? Apian? Creature like egg bird. Don't know. Let's try 19 across. We'll go over this side. Talk insipidly about ecstasy for Gussie's tree. Aussie's tree. So we want an Australian tree, probably. Talk insipidly. <sighs> Don't know that. Oh, I'm going to have to try something completely blind. 16 down. Pits under the hills with earth on top. Lots of words that have lots of synonyms there. How about this one? Bull kept in stable for two mixed days of the year. Yeah, a bull could be an ox, and the equinoxes are two fixed days of the year. They're not actually fixed, are they? Maybe I thought they were at the time, but I mean, they can vary very slightly, depending on something. Um, but equines are the stable there, so that works quite nicely. Got an X in 22 down, that should help. Got an of in the message, that looks right. 22 down, name elf that's not soft. N for name, elf could be pixie, but it hasn't got soft. P, so that's nixie. A nasty mythical creature from the spa, well I believe that a nixie is some sort of um, imagined spirit from probably the sea, Nixie. Let's have a look. A malignant, so nasty, water spirit, so creature from the sea, question mark. Okay, fair enough. Good. 26 across with an E in the middle. Revolutionary France seconds those who are dead poachers, etc., Poachers must have the misprint. Revolutionary France seconds those. Seconds can be just the letter S. Oh, Ch Che Guevara is the classic revolutionary. France can be the letter F. Chefs, those who are dead poachers, etc. What's the misprint there? Those who are... Because a chef could poach something. So the misprint must be in dead. Head poachers? The chef? Might be. It would give us of the... I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that's a brilliant clue. Poor effort, me. 19 down. Remarkably nice ship, not one. So an anagram of nice ship without I. Shaped like a brig. Sphenic. Must be a word. And I don't know what the misprint there is, so let's have a look at Sphenic. Uh, Wedge-like. Shaped like a brig. Um, shaped like a trig, grig, I don't know. Going to have to work out the message and I uh, hope we can work out what that is. Now let's try 16 down, not, not just because those two S's must be right, probably. Oh, pits under the hills, puts under, hills could be rises, Oh, 
the rises with E for earth on top. Ether rises is puts under, as in puts under anaesthetic. Okay, good. Now, 19 across N, it does end in L something H. Talk insipidly. Blah? So is there a Blah that is an Australian tree? Blah, an Australian tree of the Casuarine genus. So we get... This is B -lar. so that letter is B or S. What is the message going to say? Kill the heart, perhaps, of the grid. And maybe it's fill the heart of the grid. So that's not worked into mass for cake. It's formed into mass. <laughs> okay, fill the heart of the grid. Sudoku style. That's what it's going to say. And yes, I did sort of remember that this was going to turn into some sort of Sudoku style puzzle. But I did not remember, and I do not remember, what the heck we're meant to do with these letters. Oh, let's try and finish the clues. Children's lips, 21 across. Children's lips closing round a nipple. <laughs> It's a very well worded clue if it works. Um, children's lips. M and R will be right. Closing round A. So surely, I don't know. I mean, it must be A in something. Nipple. Ah, uh, we, we want a T misprint, I think. So tipple, so it's a drink. Children's lips closing round a nipple. Well, in fact, I'm going to just fill in the rest of the uh, misprint letters just so that I don't have to keep going back and forth between the word and um, the grid. Fill the heart of. I will be very surprised. Oh, yeah. Prince Igor. I didn't even notice there was a misprint there. Prince Igor is obviously a famous opera. Grid Sudoku style. I suppose there's a chance style could be wrong, but not much of one. So there's all the correct letters, and that should help us with anything. There's children's lips closing round a tipple. I don't know what that is. Let's go back to the ones we haven't really done. Three down again. Now we know the misprint. In despair, are they changed? In despair... Are they changed? In despair. Deathly? No. Are they changed? I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. That's annoying. What the D at the beginning? That's definitely right. In despair. Are they changed is the misprint. So, again, I think, oh, okay, it's another and lip. Again, the whole clue, I get it now, it's an anagram. Diapers, as in nappies, and they are changed by despairing parents and despairing fathers at first, I suppose. Um, that's an interesting clue. And I mean, I get that. Our, our di diapers are changed in the word despair in the sense of it's an anagram. <sighs> okay, that's sort of clever, but sort of a bit unfair. 15, now make hard. It ends in I something E. Subs it is hard because we want the H. Substance from burnt iodine in azure compound. Galvanize, is that make hard? I just, it's very hard to solve that. Too scientific for me. Um, let's do these downs then. 15 down. We know there's an E in it. Look, strip, she'll clean your pit. 
which is now kit. Laundress, la and undress. Okay. It's got LA. It's that one's U or I. That one's an N. That one's D or R. And then the rest is as printed assets. Let's try 18 down. Oh, that avian term for creature. Oh, Asian term now for creature like egg bird. Asian term for creature like egg bird. What earth does that mean? 21 down. Lecture. I haven't looked at this yet. Lecture in mathematics hovers in such places places um, with the L misprint that becomes hovels so L in sums gives us slums okay 25 across cries ethnic tries ethnic cleansing that is right as in years without restraint as is it an anagram? Arianizes. I'm not impressed with without restraint being an anagram indicator. Maybe it could be. I wouldn't do it now. I obviously did it then. 18 across. Asian term for creature like egg bird. Oh, well, Asian could be the definition. Term for creature could be E. Like egg bird. Something like Chilean, but an Asian. Um, I don't know. 21, I don't know. Children's, okay, well, there's three answers left, and I don't know what they are. And that is probably not going to help. However, let's have a little think about the Sudoku style fill of this grid, whatever that means. Now, Given that we know from the preamble that the clash letters have to be replaced, that implies the other letters don't. And in the other letters, we have P within the 9 by 9 middle of the grid. We have P, E, A, R, L, R, no, N, I. And that is reminding us of the title of the puzzle, which was Line Parts. So it looks like the whole Sudoku is going to be made up of the letters of line parts, which are nine different letters. So they could act as the numbers one to nine, effectively. Um, so where the clashes occur, it's quite possible that if the two clash letters give us one possibility for the Sudoku, that we use that one. Here, for instance, R or E in this cell, but it's right next to another E. So clearly that would have to be an R if we were making up a Sudoku. Oh, that can't be an R, it's right above another R. So they'd have to be replaced by something else. Ooh, I can't even remember. I mean, I can't remember how it works and I can't. It's difficult to solve. This is quite a hard puzzle. 15 across, make hard substance from burnt iodine. What, burnt? I don't know any synonyms, short synonyms for burnt. Hot iodine in azure compound. An anagram of azure? Yes, it could end in I-Z-E. word burnt the burnt bit is the bit I'm struggling with here and it's 
very hard when there's so little checking available. None of those L, E, or A can be trusted. Wow. Well, I mean, my apologies to anyone who struggled with this puzzle a long time ago. Asian, term for creature like Egbert. Eastern, got it. E is the term or last letter of creature. And then as is like. Turn must be Egbert. Is there really a word, Egbert? There is the sooty turn. Why didn't I look that up earlier? Okay, so this is Eastern, so that's E or L. Um, then A, that's I or S. Then T, E, R, N. Now I think, I mean, we might get into a position where Let's have one more go, 21 across. Children's lips, or even children's tips, but that would be an odd definition. Children's lips, closing round A, tipple. Children can be C-H. Lips. Lips. Lips is odd. Maybe C-N? No, that doesn't work. I think what we might have to work on is let's just forget all of the clash cells. Let's just take them out. We might be able to solve the Sudoku just with the other letters given. So I'm going to start having a go at this 9 by 9 centre of the grid, assuming it's not a variant and it doesn't say it's any sort of variant Sudoku. Just assuming that these letters in, um, I should get rid of that as well, and that. So only the letters in these alternate cells, oh, I should also get rid of that, that one, and that one, because they're probably going to be erased by clashes. So here we have various letters from line parts. We've got them all represented now. We've got a T. And let's just ignore the outside three rows and columns each side and just look at the grey section and we're going to try and complete this puzzle as a Sudoku. We have to imagine the three by three boxes. Maybe I should uh, draw it up in Excel to make it a bit clearer. Um, and I'm going to try and solve this as a Sudoku as far as I can. Now, as I say, I should be able to get other given letters from 15 across, 21 across, just those two. Um, but at the moment, I can't. So hopefully I'll get enough help to help solve them. That might be possible. So I know some people like turning these letters to numbers in a kind of wordy Sudoku, but I don't need to do that, I don't think. So let's have a look at E's here. Two E's in column eight and nine. So an E must go there because of that E and that E. Um, that's as much as I can do with E's straight away. Ends. We've got an N in column three and column one, so that must be an N. Um, the N in column eight can't be here because of that N, or here because of that N. We've also got that and that. The only N it could be is there. Um, A would be have to be one of those. P. P is ruled out from those two by that one, and that one stops it being there. That must be P. Um, N, T, S, don't know. N, P, A, R must be one of those. A, A must be here. I'm really going to have to do those answers, aren't I, to give me a bit more work to go on. And I assume that it's right to be entirely ignoring the clashes, because 
I just think they're not going to be relevant. And there's very few S's and T's as givens so far, or even L's. There's only a couple of L's. That's not very helpful either. Okay, I might have to just go back to the grid and work on those two clues until I can get them. That's very annoying. 21 across. Children's lips closing round a tipple, ending in N, something R. Children, as I say, could be CH, but children's lips closing round a tipple. Closing can mean enclosing on its own. Um, children's lips, Cupid's bow or something. Lips. Do children have a word for lips? And now, now I'm seeing something right. Now there's the possibility that instead of Pauline at 12 across, Ratline would fit. And that would match in earnest and inertia. So maybe the grid is meant to be filled with real words in the end. Oh my goodness. That's quite, that's quite clever. So if that's Ratline, then this can be in earnest again. We can get complaint at 17 across. The laundress is going to become a paintress and lantern and hairnet. All these words are changing. That was hairier, it's now hairnet. Laundress becomes paintress. This bit, I'm not sure. Sky becomes sky, skier, becomes skies. Townie becomes towns. Diapers, oh, diapers. This could be an eye. What's a diaper? something. Look at that, an anticlinal fold. <laughs> How bizarre. I just didn't spot this happening. So cave-ins, you see, inertia's right. Scylla, that is something. I can't remember what. This must still be slums, I suppose. Oh no, sorry, that's Oh, what's going on? I need to remove that. Okay. So this is Sella, right? Svenic. There might be words splenic, and we can't have an L like a spleen. We can't have an H, I mean. Um, wow. Now, if we use these letters in our Sudoku grid, I mean, we've got a huge stride forward. Now, I am partly using the fact that I know that it's quite likely that we're going to end with real words in the grid, but that is something that happens in crosswords when they're, when they're well done. So we can use all of that lantern here, net. Uh, Paintress, is that a risk? I don't think so. I think that's got to be what that answer is. Um, Cave-ins, towns. And I think this Sudoku is going to be very easy to complete now, thank goodness. Because it wasn't looking all that easy before. Now we get L here. Um, T and S to go in row three, finish row two with a P, finish column two with an E. In fact, the even numbered columns and rows are very easy now. We've got all this stuff in um, I, A, and S here. Hmm, that's not obvious. N, S, P, E, A, R, I, T, L. Okay, we're not quite done yet. But we're getting a lot closer now. Um, N, S, oh, that's an I to complete the box. T, N, E, A, S down here. So we don't know which of A, S is there. 
don't know which of RL is here. I'll put them in small letters when I don't know. Um, ANSER, that's P, then we, that's L, and these two are IT in some order. Interesting, interesting, quite unexpected. That's quite pleasing, actually, that I can suddenly surprise myself <laughs> 13 years later on how a puzzle works. Because you would have thought I would remember having created it and what I was doing, but clearly I didn't. So this isn't actually finished yet. Um, but that P is quite useful, because that P suggests this might be a P. Well, it's P for plums, and the final word that fills in here, P-I-L-A, Pilena, must be, Pilsner. Oh, my Lord, Pilsner. Is that, in fact, the answer to 21 across a, a tipple? Children's lips. Oh, look at that. It's hidden in the words, children's lips, backwards. They close round, round to turn it round. Wow. That's quite a good clue. Pilsner. Okay. So that probably helps us with the Sudoku. Again, we get an I here and an S here. That fixes S and N up. There, we've got A and R here, um, that's N, that fixes S and A there, we've got R and L fixed here, um, um, this S and L, yes, they must go in that order, P and I here, don't know the order yet. And up here we've got L and T, yes, we can resolve those. Um, T and I, okay, we do know now that that's P, I, R, and that's T, I. So that is the complete solution. Let's just see what that means here. Prelati. Um... So, prelatine or pre prelatize, I think that Z is going to be part of it. So, we know that this word must be something R, something L, something T, I, Z, E. Um, make hard. Substance from burnt must be lit iodine in azure compound. Uralitize. My God, that must be a word that I do not know anymore. Uralitize. Here it is. To turn into uralite, which is an altered mineral. mineral. I don't really know if... If uralitizing something is making it hard, but uralitize can then become the completely different word, prelatize, in the final grid. And um, I think what you would also have to do to complete this puzzle is to fill in the gray squares. Now, because I'm using a software which treats them as blocks, I can't do that here, but this is the center of the final grid. And I mean, that's a fascinating puzzle in the end. Um, Needed a few Sudoku abilities to do it, although it was very straightforward. Not actually that good a puzzle for Sudoku solvers. Um, I guess the point of the, of the preamble is to explain that some of the clashes, if you happen to know that more than half of the clashes were replaced by one of their letters, that would prove the puzzle the, the, the positions of the letters in one way. But the other way of using that is, the, the really important thing to know is that 
the grid is going to make all real worlds, which the preamble doesn't say explicitly, but must happen because of that um, that injunction. That's a really remarkable. It's remarkable, I think, that 13 years later, I couldn't remember how my puzzle worked in full. I knew it finished with a Sudoku grid in the middle. I did know that. I didn't realize that it finished by changing real words into other real words. And I think almost every word, no, not quite every word, in earnest has stayed exactly the same. Inertia, but Pilsner, but very almost every other one of these words that goes into the center of the grid has changed in the final grid. That's a very surprising outcome to me. How bizarre. So you've watched me solving my own puzzle, probably patting myself on the back slightly for how it's compiled. I don't know if that's um, of any interest. It's quite interesting to see me solve my own puzzle. And I struggled quite a bit with it. Not so much the clues, although three or four of them at the end were very hard. That you relativize, that's vicious. But Pilsner was surprisingly hard, and for a hidden, that, that really was ridiculously difficult. And there's the final puzzle, line parts. I guess that's why I would recommend the magpie to anybody. I do also recommend that you um, subscribe to our channel, and uh, feel free to patronize us on Patreon, and thank you very much for watching. It's been, it's been interesting for me, I can tell you that. Hope to see you again soon on Cracking the Cryptic. Bye now.